Now that we've downloaded our resting state data, we're going to do some pre-processing to clean out the data to do a resting state analysis. Now if you have uber underscore subject dot py working and python working as well, this is a pretty easy straightforward thing to do. If you don't, use the following instructions under step 9 of the afni underscore proc dot py. Yeah. afni underscore proc dot py under step 9. It's essentially the same thing, it just might take you a little bit longer instead of using uber underscore subject dot py, which we'll be using in this tutorial. Now what we're doing, what the upshot is, is we're going to be just cleaning up the data using a slightly different set of steps than we would using a typical task-based fMRI analysis. And then when we get to the GLM, all we're going to enter are motion regressors. Okay, so everything that's being modeled is just the motion. We're essentially removing that, and in the error or residual data set, which usually in a task-based analysis is everything that we haven't modeled or aren't really interested in, that's the stuff that we're going to be interested in for a resting state analysis because it's essentially devoid of any motion related activity now. Well, it should be because we've tried to load that activity onto these motion regressors. And then we can use that error.ts dataset to do a correlation map. All right, so what I'm going to show here is just a simple data set and how we would set this up with Uber subject. So within each of these we have session one and then we have an anatomical and a resting state data set. So from here I'm going to boot up uber underscore subject dot py. Here's what it looks like. Subject ID, this is totally up to you. I'm just going to say like SOO3 and group ID KKI. Now here select analysis initialization because instead of task we're going to be selecting rest. After you've done that hit apply. Okay, so notice it just shows you what's been changed. So we're doing a specific set of pre-processing blocks, specifically despike, time shifting, alignment, which is slightly different from what we do in a traditional, typical task-based analysis. Also notice that the motion limit, in other words, the TRs that we're going to censor or remove, we've made that a slightly more conservative or stricter threshold. AFNI defaults to about 0.3 for traditional so task-based analyses, but for resting state, since motion is a much more insidious confound, it gets lower to 0.2. So this means that we're going to be probably losing more TRs, but we're also probably going to minimize the confounding effects of head motion. Now it's up to you. If this means that you're going to be losing almost all your subjects, you might want to make this a little bit more liberal or increase it a little bit, but it's also going to put you at risk for more confounding effects. So it's really up to you. In this case, I'm going to leave it as 0.2. Everything else, all the defaults are pretty good. For the anatomical, select the thing that's in the anat data set. And for the epi, select what's in this resting folder. And really, that's it. So once you have that, and also uncheck stimulus testing times or timing files because we're not using anything, any tasks, or modeling those. Most of the rest of this is fine. The default should be okay. If you want to tweak things like the alignment or the warping options, feel free to do so. But for most purposes, the defaults should be fine. So just hit this to check that everything is okay. Actually generate the script and then this button will run it. Okay, now it takes about five, six minutes. I'm not going to do that right now. But I'm going to show you what it should look like once we have it done for somebody. So here's somebody that I've already analyzed. And within this, after running uber subject.py, it's going to create this entire directory tree for the results. So within this results, notice it's done all the pre-processing. And also, if we boot up AFNI, notice that we have this ERRTS data set. So it's everything that we did not model, right? So all the motion stuff that gets put out into a different data set, all the resting stuff is now going to be put out into this air.ts data set. And these time courses, we can select a specific region or a voxel, and we're going to be correlating these time courses across the brain. We'll get into that in the next tutorial, but just right now I want people to be clear about what exactly is being modeled and what we're going to be focusing on for the resting state analysis. This all must be true because I'm wearing a suit.